Hi everyone, I'm Jack the Rambling Rack and I hope that you're doing well. I'd like to share some thoughts on After Dark by Haruki Murakami. And honestly, I really enjoyed this book. Um, by the ending, I, I felt that it had come together in a very interesting way and in a very effective way. The final 40 pages reminded me uh, to a certain extent of really the finer moments in uh, Dubliners, the short stories by James Joyce, and those famous epiphanies that occur. Because across the final 40 pages of After Dark, we have two characters, Takahashi and uh, Marie, who gradually achieve that level of self-revelation. Uh, the, their introspection, their self-expression, uh, climaxes very effectively, and, and I think in, in an authentic and honest way. And so it, it all just coalesces really well. The, the hopes that these characters have, their personalities, the quirks that they exhibit, um, you know, all of it combines very effectively. The, there's a surrealist sort of God's eye point of view going on um, that does feel a little bit obtrusive when it's interspersed in the middle of the book, but the, when it bookends the novel, I think it's very effective. So it was a book I enjoyed. Um, and, and I honestly, I think I enjoyed it more than I have most of the Murakami novels I've read. I do want to read one passage just to give a sense of like, what, what are we getting in After Dark? This is towards the end, he goes, it's not as if our lives are divided simply into light and dark. There's a shadowy middle ground. Recognizing and understanding the shadows is what a healthy intelligence does. And to, to acquire a healthy intelligence takes a certain amount of time and effort. I don't think you have a particularly dark character. Marie thought about Takahashi's words. I am a coward though, she says. Now there you're wrong. A cowardly girl doesn't go out alone like this in the city at night. You wanted to discover something here, right? What do you mean here? Someplace different, someplace outside your usual territory. I wonder if I discovered something here. Uh, and yes, <laughs> there is discovery across this novel that the characters aren't flat and static and i think that's one of the reasons i appreciated it uh the this, this is a novel from sort of the second half of murakami's career as a novelist and i can i can recall when this book sort of landed on the shelves here in the u.s uh, i it was um when i was in college and i had sort of just discovered haruki murakami as a novelist and read i think two of his novels and maybe uh some of his short stories and th this was a book that kind of landed and i i didn't read it at the time, I just read it this year. But I, I'm, I'm glad that I've sort of taken the time to pursue his, his you know, his, his catalog of works to get to this point. Because I think this is a book that fuses a number of Murakami's sensibilities as a writer in a very effective and positive way. It combines some of those interesting pop culture references, uh, realist uh, grounding that occurs in a work like Norwegian Wood, with some of those stranger, more surreal aspects without sort of going off the deep end the way I think he did in Kafka on the Shore. And so it's a book that I think fuses that realism and surrealism very effectively. Um, honestly, more effectively than any, you know, surrealist work I could think of off the top of my head and, and grounding it so effectively. Um, but very briefly, the After Dark takes place across a single night. So it starts just before midnight and then it ends just before sunrise. And we're primarily spending time with two characters, Takahashi, who is a uh, sort of indolent law school student, <laughs> uh, who's also an itinerant musician, of course. Uh, he plays the trombone and he's practicing with his band tonight. And then a uh, the younger sister of a uh, woman he, he knew in school and sort of went on a double date with one time. He hasn't seen her in years. They run into each other in a late night restaurant and sort of just have a casual conversation. Then something happens and gradually the two characters end up interacting with each other more. They end up interacting with uh, a very uh, specific violent situation that ends up causing them to question sort of their relationships to you know, their lives, the, the choices they've made, the sort of career vocation aspirations they have, and ultimately their relationship to each other as these casual acquaintances. Um, but recognizing, you know, sort of this, uh, recognizing the aspirations that the other character has in a, in a very positive and I think affirmative way. Um, Takahashi is, I would, I would, I really felt he was one of the more accessible, relatable, less creepy um, male characters Murakami has written in, in, in a way that felt refreshing, honestly. And Marie, we, we spend a huge portion of the novel with a uh, female character. And we get in her mind, we see uh, her hopes, it, it, we see her doubts in a way that is not um, primarily sexualized. And I think that was another thing I really appreciated about this book. Now we do on the cover have this uh, sleeping woman. And that is an interesting plot point that uh, we, we periodically are checking in with Marie's sister, Ari, who seems to just be asleep the whole night. 
and there's something weird going on uh, with her uh, being asleep across this single night that we're, we're spending time with. But overall, it's a good book. I did want to read another passage to give kind of a sense of, you know, just, you know, Murakami, when he goes after human memory, he goes after it well. <laughs> you know what I think she says? That people's memories are maybe the fuel they burn to stay alive. Whether those memories have any actual importance or not, it doesn't matter as far as the maintenance of life is concerned. They're all just fuel. Advertising fillers in the newspaper, philosophy books, dirty pictures in a magazine, a bundle of 10,000 yen bills. When you feed them to the fire, they're all just paper. The fire isn't thinking, oh, this is Kant. Or, oh, this is the Yomiri Evening Edition. Well, it burns. To the fire, they're nothing but scraps of paper. It's the exact same thing. Important memories, not so important memories, totally useless memories. There's no distinction. They're all just fuel. Kurogi nods to herself. Then she goes on, you know, I think if I didn't have that fuel, if I didn't have these memory drawers inside me, I would have snapped a long time ago. I would have curled up in a ditch somewhere and died. It's because I can pull the memories out of the drawers when I have to, the important ones and the useless ones, that I can go on living this nightmare of a life. I might think I can't take it anymore, that I can't go on anymore. But one way or another, I get past that. And so... Murakami spends a lot of time not talking about memory, not talking about human consciousness uh, in After Dark. And yet, by the end, it becomes clear that that's what he's been exploring throughout the book, as, as he so often is in his sort of surrealist novels like Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World, Kafka on the Shore. Um, he, he's so interested in that. And he gives us a couple of interactions across a single night to gradually build this foundation for the characters to reach a point where they get to have this level of discussion, to have this discourse within the novel that's very provocative in a, in a very you know positive way. Uh, now it is more common. So <laughs> there are of course the 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 uh, moments that keep it from being a, a less the you know uh, a non-perfect novel, and uh, there is a very violent scene. I did want to uh, re read a passage that I think affects you know evokes the violence. This is one of many violent, bloody acts being performed in secret on the hidden side of the city. Things from another world that come in on another circuit. And a character thinks of that at the culmination of a night uh, in which he has sort of tangentially encountered a very violent act um, where a man has, has assaulted and attacked uh, a sex worker there in Japan. And, and we see the ways in which different characters sort of try to some try to rally around her, but others just sort of dismiss her and dismiss the, this character's condition uh, and, and her work and, you know, where she's at in life, just very dismissively in a dehumanizing way. And I don't know that Murakami as a writer is doing that. Uh, I think there have been times in his career where he's doing that, but I don't think he was doing that in After Dark, but it is still a very uh, violent, traumatic situation and something to be aware of. Um, I think that going in with almost any of his novels. Uh, but overall, again, I really, I was really impressed by this book. I'm glad I read it. Uh, and it's one that I would recommend. If, you, if you've kind of been put off by Haruki Murakami and some of his novels, this might be one to try. And if you've enjoyed his works, particularly sort of the two ends of the spectrum, those very realistic, like pop culture infused books or the very surrealist books, this is one that I think is right in the middle. Um, so it might be worth a shot. Now, I mentioned Murakami, of course, uh, Hard Boiled Wonderland and the World is probably, I think, my favorite. I think this is the one where he hits his highest heights, uh, even if there are some imperfections in it that glare a little bit. And then there's Norwegian Wood, which I'm probably, uh, you know, on the, I would rank that as maybe the weakest of the books uh, that I've read from him. Uh, I would... I think this is, After Dark is the closest I felt uh, with Murakami um, drawing on uh, Ryunosuke Akatagawa's short stories. I think generally Murakami's going off in a very different direction, and he's, he's very open about that when he writes an introduction to Akatagawa's stories. But I think in After Dark, he, he hits some of the same notes, uh, being the, the dark ironies that exist there. There are characters who, who ask questions around whether hope, either, whether there's any sense for hope. Um, and those were questions that Akatagawa was, you know, exploring. Uh, I also was reminded of rereading Thousand Cranes from Yasunari Kawabata earlier this year in January. There is a sense in which Murakami uses dialogue quite effectively across After Dark, and he has characters really um, 
expressing ideas in, in, you know, in interesting ways and expressing their ideas around their relationships and, and being able to sort of, you know, probe at each other and dig at each other in what feel like very simple quotidian ways about people who don't like eggs or people who don't want to eat other particular foods, uh, the, the way they listen to music, the different choices like that. Um, and it sounds a little bit like what Linda Rosenkrantz was doing in Talk, a sort of experimental novel where she used recorded conversations to build and craft a, a novel out of dialogue. Um, and then that, of course, led me to thinking of uh, Rachel Cusk and her trilogy beginning with Outline. The um, sort of surrealism, realism fusion reminded me of Ghosts from John Banville, the second in, uh, this was the sequel to the Book of Evidence, which I think was sort of the, the real explosive uh, novel that John Banville wrote. But I think Ghost is actually my favorite from him. Uh, I was reminded a little bit of Ransom from J. McInerney uh, from the 80s. Uh, this one's set in Japan and one of my all-time favorite covers, I'll be honest. If only the book lived up to that. And as with uh, many of Murakami's works, I was reminded a little bit of Kafka and some of his strangest stories. The other one I was reminded of was uh, the films, particularly of David Lynch and to a certain extent, maybe Videodrome from David Cronenberg. But David Lynch in this, this realism, he's exploring works like Mulholland Drive, um, some of the, the ideas he explored in Twin Peaks around memory and sort of characters being, you know, trapped in sort of a sleepwalking life. Uh, I think Murakami was sort of exploring some of those same avenues as well. So this was After Dark. I really liked it. And I'd be curious to know if others have read that, if there uh, are other works by Murakami that folks recommend. So I hope you have a great one. Thank you.